All oh, right, continuing from the uh, first part of research. So um, the authors of your textbook talk about uh, the experimental method and um, what an experiment is and some of the other um, aspects of it. Um, experiment and research and experimental method, um, uh, literature search, uh, some of those terms are used interchangeably and um, tend to kind of mean similar and sometimes the same things. Um, the experimental method is like a major topic and then um, underneath the major topic are the subtopics of um, the different kinds of uh, research methods that can be conducted. Um, the experimental method is a broad category um, and it, it's really um, meant to indicate that uh, when someone uses um, the experimental method, they're using uh, time-tested scientific principles in conducting their research. And it um, has certain aspects to it. I wish in this text they showed you um, a, uh, a model of the um, kind of circular uh, connection relationship between the experimental method and some of the other concepts that are talked about in here like hypotheses and theories, but they don't. Um, anyway, um, the experimental method consists of um, experiment, an experiment that tests and a hypothesis um, focusing on particular research question or questions. And again, the research question always drives the type of experiment that is done. Um, one thing to note is that even, even in um, using the experimental method where you have an experimental group, a control group, and you're testing an independent variable and a dependent variable, um, which these consist of the experimental method, and there are, are different models or designs, um, ver uh, varieties of the experimental group, the control group, etc. Um, even when a scientist uses the experimental method and conducts a rigorous scientific research study, it is still very difficult to absolutely 100% um, no possibility of other uh, variables to prove that X causes Y. And that is because it is very difficult to eliminate all the other possible uh, confounding or intervening or um, interfering uh, variables. It's very difficult for us as humans, even when we use a rigorous scientific method, to absolutely rule out all other um, possible interfering factors. So if you see anything that says, and I see this in newspapers and you know various websites or whatever, that uh, X causes Y, what that really means that is, is that based on some research, and it could be good or bad research, which is another thing you have to look at, but based on some research, it appears that for some people, this causes that. However, it's always the case that it could be something else. Always. <laughs> and that's true for any science. So um, we can never, for 100% certainty, um, especially when we're talking about human behavior, say that, for example, an abusive childhood will absolutely always cause um, problems in adulthood or for that child to be abusive or whatever because human behavior is so variable. Anyway, the experimental method is the best, it's also called the scientific method, the best method that we have um, 
so far in the history of science to get pretty close to proving that something causes something. Most of the time, however, um, people are really finding out, they're really looking at, they're really um, discovering relationships between variables. And that's covered in the um, correlational um, research. So um, in correlational research, uh, experimenters are really um, looking at how two or more variables, such as eating and obesity, relate or don't relate to each other. <clears throat> and so um, if you have a positive correlation, one could say in an experiment, one could test as people eat more, obesity increases. That's a positive correlation. Or one could say um, to see if there's a relationship between um, dieting or exercising and obesity, one could say for a, a, a negative or inverse cor an, an inverse correlation that um, as exercising increases, obesity decreases, for example. So these are called correlations and they are just demonstrating, demonstrating relationships. That is one variable changes, another variable changes, sometimes with it, and if it's a negative correlation, sometimes doesn't change with it, or if it's an inverse correlation, as one variable goes up, the other one goes down. So correlations, and as your um, author said, they do not prove or try to prove or indicate causal relationships. In other words, correlations are only looking at how variables may vary or not, or how they may relate correlate with each other or not, they are not looking for and are not and are not trying to find causation. They are not looking for a variable causing some other variable. <clears throat> um, your uh, text looks at um, descriptive methods, so naturalistic observation, case studies, laboratory observation and surveys. Um, these tend to make a little bit more sense when you actually do them than just writing about them. But you get the general idea, the gist of it, from what um, the author is saying in your textbook. Okay, I'm almost out of time, so I'm going to stop now. I have a nine-minute time limit. <laughs>